Right now, Transnet has reported, uh, basically, it, uh, it's put across sizable gains and could potentially contend the view that a wholly state-owned company cannot thrive and produce commendable results. Now, the report published that Transnet Capital Investment has uh, risen to 31.8 billion rand and that profits are still escalating. Well, join us now in the studio is uh, the Group CE, and that's uh, Brian Molefe of Transnet. Good to have you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. When I asked you about your results, I said, congratulations, how are you feeling? You told me you're feeling elated. Indeed. What I do you think is driving them? Just talk us through this. I think that uh, the 61,000 employees at Transnet are uh, uh, motivated and um, uh, geared to achieving these results because um, uh, we have decided as a company that uh, our performance is important to ensure that we can increase uh, employment in the economy, that we can create jobs, and that there is, uh, we can reduce the number of people who have to go back to their families and say, there is no food tonight because I couldn't get a job. Yeah. So the, what really drives us as a company is a possibility to create jobs, um, 240,000 jobs that we said we would create through the capital investment program. And uh, that is what keeps us going, the possibility that uh, we can create 240,000 jobs. Yeah, let's let's talk about infrastructure because that obviously contributes enormously to the economy. Yes. How is is Transnet doing in this in this area? We started our capital investment uh, infrastructure investment uh, project about three years ago to invest uh, 300 uh, billion. Uh, to date, we have invested about 80 billion, and. Um, uh, uh, this past year, which is the year that ended on the 31st of March uh, 2014, we invested 31.9 billion, which we estimated created about 17,000 jobs in the economy. This includes the initial payments for the 1,000 uh, locomotives that we announced earlier that we would buy. Yeah. Uh, Transnet has been given specific mandates, um, and they're not easy to live up to. They yes. really haven't. But what would you find are the most challenging areas? Well, the most challenging areas is um, the disruptions that happen to the operations uh, due to uh, exogenous factors. Uh, sometimes, uh, last, last year we had uh, uh, nine days of power outages at Richards Bay Coal Terminal as a result of a, con a connection with the municipality. Uh, we had uh, a strike by a new union, NTM, uh, on the coal line. Uh, we're currently having a Lumsa strike at the uh, and Moha terminal. So those are the challenges. Yeah. But uh, we take them uh, one challenge at a day uh, and uh, we try to steam ahead. Yeah. Skills, is that also one of your challenges or is it we something that you are addressing? I mean, we've, we've seen firsthand uh, at Transnet some of the operations that you've got that yes. are there to train uh, some of the artisans coming in and, it, and it's fabulous. But to try and enhance that even more, do you find that one of the issues that needs to be addressed? It is an issue that needs to be addressed and last year we spent 621 million rand on training uh, both uh, our employees as well as uh, uh, new intakes uh, as artisans, as uh, pilots. Uh, we trained helicopter pilots, we trained um, uh, pilots, uh, marine pilots, uh, we trained crane operators. Uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, all in all, uh, we train quite a number of people uh, in excess of 4,000 people mm. in different skills across the company. People always seem to be very pessimistic and negative about state-owned enterprises, and yet Transnet comes to the table with results like this. What is, what is, is making it different? Why, why do you think that Transnet is moving into this positive territory, turning things around and showing that a state-owned enterprise can be a positive and a, a, a huge contributor to the co economy? I think a lot of those debates are ideological. Um, people think that ownership matter, but I don't think it actually does. Management and management philosophy and the way that management interacts with workers, irrespective of ownership, uh, is what matters. Uh, so if you take a big corporation, Anglo-American, for example, it has got shareholders out there, but it's got managers, uh, the chief executive officer, the executive committee. It is how the leadership interacts with the workers, uh, how it drives the company towards performance that matters. Uh, and so uh, ownership doesn't really determine 
uh, the, the way that the company is going to perform. It is how uh, the leadership leads the company, how mm -hmm. the, the leadership motivates uh, the rest of the company and uh, uh, keeps the morale up. Uh, uh, with a particular set of goals that workers can identify with. Yeah. I, I just want to break down into transit a little bit and particularly look at the rail because I know that that was your, your key focus and I mean that contributes 50% to the total revenue. How is it growing? Is, 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 is rail really moving forward in terms of the, the vision that you wanted for the company? It is indeed. We had 25% uh, growth in um, containers and automotive, so yeah. the number of cars and the containers that we're carrying, which is really the stuff that is on the road uh, that we've been trying to move from the road onto rail. Uh, we had 25% growth uh, in containers and automotive, uh, and uh, we think we're making headway, especially uh, with respect to the moving of uh, trucks uh, from the road uh, and, and the, the containers and cars onto, onto rail. Yeah. All right, look, let's leave it there. Um, we'll obviously be watching Transnet closely, but the good news is Transnet really making a turnaround, doing exceptionally well. Um, revenue picking up 12.8% in its latest set of results. The group chief executive here in studio with us, Brian Malefa, thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. for being our guest here on the program. All right, let's take